Hello Internet and welcome to another tutorial video for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today's a little bit different, we're going to be covering some more ways to get access to buildings. I made a video about this recently and people came out of the woodwork to tell me about all the niche and less common ways of getting into buildings. Well, and people asked me to expand on some of the things that I just mentioned in passing in our first video, like uh, hacking computer terminals and crashing cars through walls. So yeah, I guess we're doing this again, which is totally fine because my melee weapons tutorial is taking forever to make and this gives me an excuse to work on something else. So first up today let's talk about those computer terminals. There's not a whole lot to say here about these really. I mentioned them briefly in the last episode because it's a relatively brief and basic topic. You will sometimes find doors in this game that are locked behind a computer terminal. You won't really know about this unless you've played the game or if they are very obvious like a terminal right next to a door. For example in the old style labs there are barracks, prisoner containment, things like that that are literally a locked door right next to a computer terminal. Those are pretty obviously connected, however in other locations like in the mine location there is a non-functional elevator. There's no obvious way to turn this on and gain access to the mine, however if you explore the area there is a computer terminal in an adjacent building that can restore power to this elevator. And then that of course gives you the access you want and you can go down into the mine. So not all of these terminals are obvious in what they connect to and additionally these computers come in two different forms. One requires no skill to perform the action and the other requires you to actually hack them which uses the computer's skill. The barracks or prisoner containment that I mentioned earlier are skill checks. If you have a low computer skill you will fail and there will be consequences. If you pass the skill check then the door is open. The consequences for failure also vary between different terminals. Some of them are pretty innocuous. The computer will just shut down and you will not be able to use it again. However others are deadly there's one that literally spawns a robot right next to you and that robot has a machine gun. Now I couldn't get footage of this but I'm pretty sure that there are terminals that will literally say in their prompt that there could be lethal or deadly consequences if you are trying to access those terminals without permission and these are the things that you should be very very cautious about. However there are also terminals that do not say this but can still spawn very deadly consequences. And then also there are sometimes multiple terminals that do connect to the same door. The example here is also in the old style lab. There's an auto dock which is an advanced tool that has uh, sort of been phased out of the game but it can still currently be used for bionics. There are also four cells nearby. Usually these contain enemies, usually they're cyborgs. The auto dock itself is locked behind a door and you can only open it using a terminal. You can hack one of these on the exterior area which is like the room outside of it which requires a computer's check and will open just the auto dock room door if you succeed. Alternatively though there is is a computer terminal near the cells and using that terminal does not require any kind of skill check but it opens all of the cells in addition to the auto dock door. This is the only situation right now that I think uses multiple terminals like this but it is possible that in the future there will be other things that work like this. Anyway, anyway, uh, like I said these uh, checks will use your computer skill. Many of the higher tier locations require a very high computer skill to succeed on the regular. I personally do not even attempt to hack a terminal unless I have a computer skill of at least level 6 and even then that is not a guaranteed success. Since many terminals can give potentially game ending consequences I personally recommend that you never even use them. As we discussed in the last episode a pickaxe or a jackhammer can completely circumvent the need for hacking. That is my preferred method of accessing those locations and it is ultimately much much safer. Moving along though next up uh, someone had pointed out in my comments that you can fell trees in order to break down walls. It's been a while since I did this it used to be a somewhat popular method of getting into the old style lab buildings and I don't usually do this mostly because cutting down trees is quite a lot of work and it takes time but it is still a possible method of entry. It's pretty straightforward but it does require a tree to be nearby. Most map gen is set up in a square. If you look at a house for instance you will see that it occupies one square map tile. Depending on the map gen there you can sometimes see where one square stops and the next begins and because of this forests will not spawn directly against buildings in the majority of circumstances. So this method only really works if there is a tree in the map gen itself and it has to be located very close to the wall. Anyway, because of those restrictions and the rarity of a tree appearing close to a building, this will not often be an option for you. In fact, I would say that this is almost never an option. When it is an option, it's pretty simple. You'll activate whatever tree cutting tool you've got, you will select cut down a tree, and then you will select the tree. After a bit of chopping, a prompt will appear at the top of your screen asking you which 
which direction you want the tree to fall. Select the direction of the wall that you're trying to knock down and hooray, you can now walk over the felled tree and through the gap that it made in the wall. Now as far as I know, this will work for literally any wall in the game. I have no idea what determines the length of the felled tree, but it seems to be about four tiles most of the time. Again, this means that you have to have a tree very close to a wall for this to work, but yeah, now you know how to do that. I really doubt you'll ever use this, but you know, it is an option. Next up, another thing we touched on briefly in the last episode, but we didn't actually cover was driving a vehicle through a wall. I didn't really recommend this because it has the potential to do a lot of harm to your character, but hey, you can do it, so let's talk about it. And the benefit here is that it's really not that hard to find a functional vehicle with which to do this. There are several factors for whether or not you will succeed in your endeavor, and the first one is the vehicle that you choose. You should obviously try this in an enclosed vehicle and not, say, like on a motorcycle. The second factor is the wall in question. House walls are pretty weak, but a double thick reinforced concrete wall is notably more durable. And third is the speed of the vehicle. It is possible to bump some walls at very low speeds and have them collapse, but mostly if you're trying to drive through a wall, it's going to require some more speed. This is especially true since most buildings that you would actually want to do this with tend to be a little bit more durable. Odds are good that you're not driving through the regular wall of a house. There's no reason to do that. You can just smash a window or whatever. Most of the time when I hear about people driving through walls, it's usually for a gun store, which are very often made of bricks. So yeah, you're going to want a vehicle that's made up of durable frames if you plan to drive it afterwards, although there's a good chance you will destroy your vehicle. You're going to be targeting a low tier or middle tier wall, and you need to get enough speed to knock down part of that wall without going so fast that your character is immediately murdered. Beyond that, to be honest, I don't know what to tell you about this. From my testing, I learned that armor does help mitigate the damage of being flung from a vehicle. Also, wearing a seatbelt seems to make a huge difference in damage from being ejected. I highly recommend you do this in a vehicle with seatbelts. However, there's no way for me to tell you an exactly safe way to do this. I can't say like, oh, get a 3,000 pound vehicle and go 18 miles an hour. It just doesn't work that way. So yeah, it is possible. I, it's very dangerous. You can be ejected from the vehicle. You can collide with uh, rubble and walls and things like that, which can deal significant damage to your character. And if you do this in a vehicle without a seatbelt and you collide with a wall and you're going too fast, you will be ejected and you will be killed. So yeah, this is a very risky maneuver depending on your setup. And I, I just, I can't recommend a way to do this safely. Now moving on next up, another suggestion from my commenters. Really, uh, really appreciate how many of you showed up to tell me that I screwed up the last video. Super, uh, super appreciative. Uh, but anyway, one of my suggestions was using firearms to blast down a door or a wall. Now I have done this before, but to be honest, I had forgotten this was even an option. Every time that I've done this previously, I've used a 50 caliber, which I know for a fact can knock down metal doors and is at least strong enough to take down a concrete wall. And I tried testing this with smaller calibers, but I couldn't find any other round that was strong enough to do this. So really this seems to be limited to the most powerful firearms in the game. It's not really a hard concept though. You will take a very big gun, you will point it at a metal door or a wall, and you will fire the same way that you would for shooting anything else. Now that I think about it, we have not covered shooting in this tutorial series yet, but we will get to that eventually. And I'm pretty sure that behind the scenes, the shot is doing a roll to see if it's powerful enough to destroy the terrain. So it is possible that you'll shoot and the target will remain intact. And because of that, it may be possible to use a lower caliber to destroy some doors or walls, but in my testing, I couldn't make that happen. Coming in here with an addendum, I did see that someone recently posted on Discord saying that they were able to knock down a brick wall using a shotgun. This is obviously unintended behavior. Obviously pellets from a shotgun are not going to knock down a brick wall. However, in Cataclysm, we don't track damage, so it's an all or nothing state. And if we look at the brick wall information, we can actually see that the minimum requirement would be 60 damage and the maximum requirement would be 160. Let's say now that your shotgun deals 60 to damage. That means that every time you shoot a bullet at the wall, the game does a check and rolls a number between 60 and 160. If the rolled number is less than the damage that you're dealing, then you can knock down the wall. So in this example, you would need to roll very, very low 
low on this chart in order for your 62 damage weapon to knock down the wall. And again, we don't have cumulative damage, so this is an all or nothing, and if you beat that number, then the wall is destroyed. Now, as I said, this is unintended behavior, so I do expect this to get fixed in the future. However, at the moment, it means that you can, in fact, destroy certain walls with lower tier weapons. Just wanted to pop in and mention that. Obviously, the 50 caliber is still the way to go if you want like a, a much higher chance of actually destroying terrain like this, but it is possible with lower calibers. Next up today, let's talk about tunneling. This was another thing that was suggested in my comment section, and I just want to cover it briefly. Now, originally, this segment was going to be me explaining in detail how to tunnel into buildings, but then I tested it, and I decided that this is a horrible thing that you should never do in this game. Now, the concept is really simple. You would use the construction menu to dig down a floor, and then you will use your mining tool to dig into the building in the same way that we discussed in our previous episode. The problem is that this this is a lot of work, it has additional tool and material requirements to dig the stairs, and it has almost no practical application. In all of my years of playing this game, I have never needed to tunnel into a building. I'm sure that someone is already typing me a comment like, oh, I've done this once in four years, therefore it is valid. But that is a crock. You do not need to tunnel into buildings, at least in 99.9999% of circumstances. Now to do this means you already have a mining tool of some sort. Obviously you need to tunnel through the underground area anyway. And if that is the case, then you can just dig through a wall on the ground floor. It's going to save you dozens of hours of in-game work and it's fine for the vast majority of circumstances. So yeah, I'm mentioning it, but it's not worth your time in my opinion. This seems like a, something like a newbie trap where you might be a new player and you think like, oh, I don't want to go through the ground floor because maybe there's something dangerous, so I'll just dig underground instead. But I don't think that that's a good use of your time and, and I just can't think of a situation where this is relevant. So it's not worth your time. It's not really worth my time to cover it. Honestly, this is already a longer conversation than this deserves so just uh, don't do this moving on though next up in the last episode we talked about how there is a gun store location with a door on the roof however I did not actually cover how to get up onto the roof of a building roof access is not super well established in the game there are many places that have roofs but they don't actually have any obvious way to access them and that obviously tracks with real life most you know if you go to a house most people don't have any way to get up on their roof outside of using a ladder now depending on the location there may be a downspout which is something that you can climb. I'm pretty sure it used to be that you couldn't mount this terrain. You would have to use the lowercase e key to examine the spout and then select to climb up onto the building. However, in my testing, I discovered that you can stand on this downspout and use the less than symbol in order to ascend. Downspouts are actually pretty good escape routes while you're playing as well since zombies and animals cannot climb them. However, when you try to climb a downspout, there is a chance that you will slip and fall and take damage. From my experience, falling is much more likely when you climb down than when you're going up. In order to climb back down, you will use the lowercase e key to examine a ledge. Depending on your tile set, you may not know where the downspout was because it's it's not really displayed when you're up a floor. However, looking here at Altica, there is clearly a tile here that is called a gutter drop and it's right next to the downspout. Now taking a look at the code here, we can see that there are many factors that affect your chance of successfully climbing or descending in this way. We won't cover exact numbers because, you know, who cares, but if your hands or feet are wet, if you have a heavy equipment load, if your stamina is low, or if you have the bad knees trait, you will fail more often. Having a high strength and dexterity score will increase your chances to climb, as does having the parkour proficiency. Additionally, if both of your arms are broken, or if you are wielding an item that requires the use of both of your hands, you will be completely unable to climb. And as far as I know, all of these penalties do stack with each other, so if you have many of them all together, you're going to have a really hard time climbing or descending safely. Now, as I said, downspouts are not on every building. They're on a lot of houses and in some commercial locations, but they don't appear everywhere. If you need to climb a building reliably or you do not have access to a downspout, you can use a step ladder instead. They are pretty large, so it's not something you're going to be carrying around in your inventory all the time, but it is an option for when you know you're going to want it. You can activate a step ladder 
better to deploy it and it becomes something that you can then step onto and use the less than key to ascend. Like the downspouts, climbing up is easier than climbing down. I don't know if you can actually fall while using a step ladder. I never have personally, but once you're on the roof, you may not be able to see where you had the step ladder deployed. And just like the downspout, that can make it more difficult to safely climb down because I'm pretty sure if you climb down on an area with a downspout or a step ladder, you are much less likely to fall. Getting onto a roof in this way, it's not always beneficial. Some roofs, uh, like they don't always have something interesting, right? It's just a roof sometimes. However, other buildings like gun stores, they can possibly have a door on the roof like we mentioned in a previous episode. This can allow you to gain access without the constant threat of zombies around you. And I kind of think that's probably it for the video. Honestly, I've been really scattered lately. Hopefully everything made sense. Uh, dealing with some stuff in my personal life that we're definitely not going to talk about here. I wasn't even sure I wanted to make this video since many of these things are pretty niche and at least one of them is just a huge waste of your time. Still though, you now have more information than you did previously about breaking and entering. If you enjoyed the video, maybe hit that like button, but regardless, thank you for watching and I of course will be back with more tutorials in the near future.